Earth, a little ball of water and rock situated towards the outer edge of the Milky Way galaxy somewhere around here. For millennia man has searched the stars seeking answers to the fundamental laws of physics and the universe, like Galileo who observed the night skies and went on to discover the moons of Jupiter amongst many achievements in his career. Since then man has been seeking evidence of extraterrestrial life, creating ever more advanced technologies like the Hubble Space Telescope in order to find ET. Even with powerful technology like Hubble, we have only been able to observe around 10% of the universe, but there are more and more cases of astronomers who work within the SETI project discovering planets like Kepler-186f in the constellation of Cygnus. Kepler-186f is an Earth-like planet which scientists believe has properties much like our own, water, rock and it's in the outer edge of the habitable zone of its sun. Could these discoveries uncover life in these distant planets? Have aliens already tried contacting Earth in order to reach out to life just like we are? Well, on one fateful day in August 1977, a strong narrowband signal was received via Ohio State University's Big Ear Radio Telescope. It was dubbed the WOW signal after astronomer Jerry R. Emmon wrote WOW on the printout once the Big Ear had finished its observations. The entire signal sequence lasted for the full 72 second window that Big Ear was able to observe it, but has not been detected since, despite several subsequent attempts by Emmon and others. Even the very large array has not yet recorded the same signal or one like it since. Various hypotheses on the source of the emission have been put forward. Although the possibility of a natural origin has not been completely discounted, to date the WOW signal is considered the best candidate for an alien radio transmission ever received. In 1973, after completing an extensive survey of extragalactic radio sources, Ohio State University assigned the now defunct Big Ear Telescope then located near the Perkins Observatory in Delaware, Ohio to the scientific search for extraterrestrial intelligence, in what would have become the longest running program of this kind in history. Over a decade earlier in a 1959 paper, Cornell physicist Philip Morrison and Giuseppe Cocconi had also speculated that any extraterrestrial civilization attempting to communicate via radio signals might choose to do so using a frequency of 1420 MHz, which is naturally emitted by hydrogen, the most common element in the universe and therefore familiar to all its inhabitants. By 1977, Emmon was working at the SETI project as a volunteer. His job involved analysing by hand large amounts of data processed by an IBM 1130 mainframe computer and printed on perforated paper. While perusing data collected on August 15th at 22.16, Emmon spotted a series of values of signal intensity and frequency that left him and his colleagues astonished. The alphanumeric sequence circled by Emmon, 6EQUJ5, represents the intensity variation of the radio signal over time, measured as unitless signal to noise ratio and ranging from 0 to 36 with the noise averaged over the previous few minutes. Each individual character correspond to a sample of the signal taken every 12 seconds. A white space character on the printout denotes an intensity between 0 and 1. The numbers 1 to 9 denote the correspondingly numbered intensities from 1 to 9. Intensities of 10 and above are indicated by a letter. A corresponds to intensities between 10 and 11, B 11 to 12 and so on. The value U, an intensity between 30 and 31, was the highest detected by the radio telescope. On a linear scale it was over 30 times stronger than normal deep space. Contrary to a common misconception, the wow signal is not actually a message. What was received appears to be an unmodulated continuous wave signal with no information encoded in it. 
The string 6EQUJ5 is simply the representation of the expected Gaussian distribution of signal intensity versus time. The WOW signal may be considered the best evidence to date of extraterrestrial communication, but is it the only signal ever received by Earth? No, it isn't, and such a signal was received in May 2015 by a Russian radio telescope. The signal hails from a solar system 94 light years from Earth, which is known to have a planet the same size as Neptune, which orbits a sun known as HD 164595. In order to have sent the message out in all directions, the aliens would have to be what is called a Type II Kardashev civilization. That means they would have the technology to harness the energy of the entire star. It would have taken 100 billion billion watts of power in order to send the signal in the first place which is a huge energy bill, and they would have still had to have produced a trillion watts of power if they were only sending it to Earth for some reason. However, the signal has not been detected since, meaning that it could end up as this generation's WOW anomaly. So what do you make of the WOW signal and other signals like it? Does it prove the existence of aliens trying to communicate with us, or is it just cosmic background noise that happened to put out a lot of racket on those days? Well, I have to say that I believe that neither are conclusive pieces of evidence of alien life, but I am open-minded to all possibilities in a universe which contains billions of galaxies and trillions of planets. When our civilization reaches such a technologically advanced stage that we can send messages across hundreds of light years, we will most likely have our first contact with ET and future generations will look back on that moment as the greatest in man's history. I'd like to take this opportunity to wish all my subscribers and viewers a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Live long and prosper.